let it supreme Lead it snappy at the crib today I mean, this cut too tough to cover this up uh, They see me in the city and they checking it Checking it, checking it, checking it No flaws, they respecting it and sweating it Man, the cleanest cut, I always get the job, fam Girls like snapbacks, women like haircuts Go on, put that hat back, homie, cause your hair sucks I don't mean to talk shit, I'm just being me, bro Come to the shop and I promise you, you gon' see, bro I don't need to make it sound like you a zero But check the hairline and all your favorite heroes <laughs> As Trav, as B, B, Her, Saeed It's more than the cut, than the cut though I swear it's more than the cut Now grab a mirror In my day, the barber was a counselor He was a fashion expert uh, He was a style coach, pimp Just general all around hustler Come on in, come on in the room. You're watching the Supremely Faded Podcast with Brother Herman, Brother Trav, Brother Brian, Brother Saeed, the Barbers of Supreme. Y'all let me know if y'all can hear me. Um, this isn't a sports program. <laughs> I got to say that. But we feel like the subject is necessary. Trav, say what's up. What's up? <laughs> what's up? What's up, bro? So yeah, we feel like the um, the subject is necessary. So we're gonna talk about it. Dion, so what I want to do is uh, I got my brother Ansar with me. <laughs> and do I get him in the camera? <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, so yeah, we want to show a little uh, welcome video of, of how they receive um, our brother Dion, then we're going to get right into it. So here y'all go. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> you like it? Love it. It's very cool, huh? It's very exciting. Very. It's your door. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Wow. Y'all are awesome. That is all right. Ah, that's hard. Yes. That's all right. I mean, that's Pesci's glasses. Yes. 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 <laughs> that's hard. Oh, I love that. Come on. That's our training room. That's what I need right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you want any of us doing that. Yeah. Down this hallway, we have our doctor's offices. We're gonna head this way. I'll show you the locker. Room. trophies out behind the glass. People get, get their pictures taken with them and be a little more interactive. Lounge. 
is our last. back the other way. Freezing. I would have wore something complete there. Yeah. Nah, that's not the cold. <laughs> You're talking crazy right now, man. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> it's your <right> here. <laughs> you like that transition? <laughs> so
So look, y'all, y'all coming in the room. Uh, this is your man Herman Muhammad. Um, we wanted to show you all just a little uh, of what CU had in the way of welcoming Prime Time, aka Dion Sanders. Um, I got Trav with me. You know what I'm saying? I got uh, the great Saeed. Let me see if I can pull my brother up. Um, you know, we, we rocking and rolling. Um, so the question is, for all of us in YouTube land, the question is, did Dion sell out? No. <laughs> no, he did not. <laughs> no, he did not. <laughs> did Dion sell out? No, he did and if you think that Dion sold out, then you still have the first job in your work. <laughs> and you still make the same salary that you started at 15 years ago. No. No, at the end of the day, it's about money, taking care of your family, and progressing, like moving forward, like going to the next level. You know what I mean? Like, Everybody in life want to go to the next level, and, and don't 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 act like I'm talking to all y'all. Don't act like when you get a little money, you ain't moving out the projects. <laughs> right. You ain't moving to Green Valley or where you where you live. <laughs> Perky Ranch. <laughs> okay, and, and let's get into it. I, and I want to you know talk to the brothers and sisters in the chat as well. Uh, tips in the building. Who else did I see? Sister Mary's in the building. Um, Sister Yolanda's in the building. She said, no, Dion absolutely did not sell out. <laughs> let's, even look, let's even look at, like, you know, all of the, you know, things that he brought to the university. You know, the, the things with Walmart, the things with Under Armour. Funding and, and paying his staff. Um, you know, improving the, the stadium, improving the field, improving the, pra the, uh, the practice field. He did a whole lot in three years than a whole lot of people did in, the, in, in, in many years of that school's existence. So no, that wasn't a sellout move at all. The lifetime of Jackson, they were playing on dirt before he got out there. Right. right. <laughs> Yeah, we got a lot of sell like a football field. Yeah. A facility, a nice facility. And then you get you come up to see you, you see the video, you get wild. Right. You get wild by that facility. Like you boys go crazy in that facility. Like we got weights. We got real weights. And uh Sister Yolanda asks, why is it that every time a black person wants to level up, we have to sell out. You know what I'm saying? You have to be called a sellout. Um, that's a good point. What about, because I, I, to be quite honest, I don't feel like the brother sold out, but I do, I did kind of have a, some concerns with regards to HBCUs and the attention that he brought to HBCUs. Um, from that level, can we understand why people would think that he, that he sold out? I mean, why would why wouldn't he want to leave there? I mean, you know, uh, we you, we watch the HBCU games. <laughs> like I I personally ain't never watched the HBCU game. Right. Dion got there. So we watched the games and they got like the cameraman. He got his phone. And it looked like he got his phone and he recording from the iPhone or <laughs> wasn't he? It was an Android. Can't he follow like the plays. Play going one yeah, way. Yeah, can't follow the play. It keep the field going. <laughs> It looked like dude was coming out the bathroom and was like, oh, I think I got it. He didn't know where the ball went. I said, did he make it or miss it? Right. So it was like little things like that, like, you know, commentators was real playing. And it, 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 it wasn't like football. It's like watching a, our high school football games sound better than, and, yeah. and, and are recorded better than the HBCU games. And maybe, right. maybe this is just speaking about, you know, the mentality of the people of Jackson, Mississippi, when they have never, you know, had anyone to actually care about 
the athletic um, department at an HBCU, and now they got someone who actually cares, then when it's time for that person to leave, he left a blueprint for them to, whoever's gonna step into those shoes, right. to follow. Well, he left his coaches there. He left, he left, coaches he's, but he's also taking some coaches with him. Yeah, you know, but, yeah right. But he, he's, you know, yeah. I, I think this is a, a thing yeah. that, yeah. you know, I heard a brother say right. yesterday, he, yeah. uh, black folks don't like change. You right. know, mm. when, when things come in, you know, we want to just keep it that way and don't, don't want to, you know, uh, what, 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 you, what they thought Dion was going to stay there, 50 years like Eddie Robinson did everybody? Right. 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 300,000. Right. 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 So listen, Yolanda says if Florida State would have offered him the job, he never would have been at JSU, at Jackson State. And then my sister Noreen, peace Noreen, says the weight of an entire state should and could not be on one man's shoulder. Where is the rest of the HBCU village? That's a good question. Yeah, and they talk so he ain't swag. You know what I'm yeah, saying? They come at him like, get out. They, 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 they happy he's out of there. Yeah. You know, and, and for all the good that he did, it seemed like the other coaches was pretty much like, Chill. get up out of here. Right. I told y'all he wasn't ready. He wasn't for swag, you know? Like, he ain't for the bar, he ain't, he ain't project. Right. You know what I'm saying? Is that what swank is? That's what it seems like. That's, that's, that's speaking on the mentality of, of, like. of, 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 of people who are in these black towns where these uh, historically black colleges and universities are. You know, you can't you can't do good, you know, and still be, you know, qualified to call yourself that. You know, or you ain't swag. Why? Cause, right. You know, you ain't struggling. Keep it lower level, yeah. Yeah. Stay on the lower level. Okay, look, look, Tip says, nope, he was HNIC in Jackson. He has a boss now in CU. Now CU controls him. I disagree. I mean, I, I disagree because, you know, he was still subject to the financial uh, 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 theme at Jackson State. Right. He was, he, he, he had a boss at Jackson as he does at, at CU. Right. Right. You know. He, it, that wasn't the University of Deion Sanders. That was Jackson mm -hmm. State University. So he, 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 he's up in there now. And that portal, it was dark as that sign behind him. <laughs> yeah, that portal, boy, they got some beasts in that portal. I know it. And, and, and my thing is, um, you know, from the, the vantage point of selling out, just looking at the state of historically black colleges and universities. Okay. I mean, who runs them anyway? Yeah. My thing is you can't ever sell out if you were never in. Right. He was at um, Jackson State, but he wasn't getting paid anything. He's basically doing that job for free for three right. years because his salary, he was foregoing, he was making sure that his staff got paid. And if, uh, if HBCUs or SWAC or whoever has such a problem, you know, in terms of selling out, why couldn't we, you know, as a people, if, if, if historically black colleges and universities belong to us, why couldn't we say, well, we value this brother? You know what I'm saying? So let's put our money together. If CU offered him five million a year, let's give him 10. Where are you putting money? Yeah, y'all weren't ready for that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Right. 
you know, you look at his pro football career, he was in five different NFL teams. Oh, yeah. You know, so. That's how it goes down. That's how it goes. That's how it goes. And some people are upset that should have played that song. Huh? Right. <laughs> Listen, Yol- Yolanda says there are only two places a coach can go. Level up to another opportunity or be fired. You got to do what's best for you. That's true. And, and in that land of, um, you know, sport and play, I, I agree 1,000%. I mean, you really can't have no love to, to no sports things. Like, for one, uh, no. my whole piece is, you know, this isn't a sports show, but it's a, it's a bigger conversation, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, as a people, if we want to claim somebody, we got to really claim somebody. You see what I'm saying? If we got to claim somebody, we got to show them that we value them. When this brother, when he's presented with an opportunity to make, you know, millions of dollars instead of congratulating him, a lot of the people, you know what I'm yeah. saying, they straight disrespecting him, man. Yeah. And, and the contribution move. that he made to uh, those HBCUs while he was there in a very, in a very short period of time. They said you know that Dion got booed after he won the SWAT championship. Wow. You didn't see that on the on on the yeah on we the, watched on the, it on the TV. We didn't see it, but there was several accounts online that said that Dion was totally disrespected as he exited the stadium to a to a to a bunch of boobs. That's, That's hate. Didn't say that to get up out of there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's hate. Yeah, I'm out. That's hate. And, and how can we? I mean, that's that man. That speaks volumes. That speaks volumes in terms of us as the people and what we should be showing. You know what I'm saying? That, that's crazy. That's crazy to me. Well, we like that, huh? <laughs> we like that. We'll cancel your ass quick. Quick. Oh, I don't like it. I don't like the council culture. No, because the council culture only they only cancel us. Exactly. And it's us. We start with us. We cancel. Each other. Right. I don't like him. Cancel him. Come on, man. We quick to cancel. Quick. We, we not canceling everybody else. We ain't canceling Hugh yeah. Hefner. We ain't canceling Brett Favre. That's what, that should be, that should be able to look at everybody right now. Right. Favre, right. Look, I don't know if this is true. We got Brother Thomas in the gun. Sound like Brother Thomas. He said, I heard when he came back to the locker room, somebody stole watches, credit cards, and some other stuff. So, yeah, that that's was, cold. That was a, yeah. from what I understand, when that they broke in his car a year or so. Yeah, I heard about the breaking the car. Yeah. He's talking about the locker room, though. So, I believe that. Wow. I believe that. Yeah, that, that's it. Sock biting. A little sock biting. Your mother said it's sock biting. Hey, bro, monkey don't stop on the show. They was doing what? They said what? Your mama said that they started playing one monkey don't stop no show. Wow. Disrespect, man. Disrespect. And at the end of the day, man, it's a game and it's a job. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's the thing, man. If we, bro, if we want to control and show love for our people and keep them loyal to us, man, we got to we gotta show loyalty to them. We got to show that we love and appreciate whatever it is that they've done because you know they nobody know about um Jackson State before Dion showed up. Right. You know what I mean? Like for real, their program was straight garbage. And he brought all sorts of attention not only to Jackson State's program but also to um HBCU's period. Right. Before before that it was just battle of the bands. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Before they about football and basketball. Exactly. You know what I mean? they, said he, they, they said he even leveled up the uniform scheme of the team. That they had so many uniforms. They said the only school that had more uniforms or just as a amount was University of Oregon. Right. So every time you see University of Oregon on TV playing football, man, they got they look like a whole new team. Mm. Right. Dion you know, brought that brought that prestige, man. Right. He brought that prestige. I'm not mad at I'm not mad at Dion, man. And, not and mad at Dion at all. We, this this is this this is a this is be a good lesson to ABC dudes. And get your money together. Get your money right. Stop. You know, as as Yolanda said, quit quit stealing money from the universities. Right. You fill up the stands this year, last year, and you still say you ain't got no money. Mm. Right. 
Right. Somebody stealing. What about yeah? What about that piece? And we just watched something. Say then we uh, right before the uh, right before the show where um, they were talking about some money, some money in Jackson State. What about the Negro stuff that's going on in these HBCUs? Man, they were saying that you know that that the, the, the money wasn't supposed to be the money wasn't where it was supposed to be. Right. Someone else is getting the money up out of there. But then they can but then they can afford to get a little boost and uh uh young Dolph and all these other cats, you know. Not young Dolph, no. Right. Young Dolph. We still, we still be bumping young Dolph. It's like he's still alive and asking for his B, did Dion sell out B? No, not at all. That's like uh, he had the opportunity to, to better his his football coaching career. And right. He'll be a fool to not take that on full steam right. ahead. Yeah. So no, I don't think he, he sold out at all. I was kind of upset at first, but I, when I got to thinking about it, yeah, go ahead and move on with your career. You can't just stay stagnant at Jackson State, what else is to come? He's going to win two championships. On to the next. Right. Exactly. Look, man, as Supercuts offered me a job and said, we're going to pay <laughs> 200000 a year. Now this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gone. <laughs> I mean, the only black man that Supercuts had was shoes. <laughs> right. <laughs> Cheers, Supercuts. <laughs> Yeah, man. It's, he ain't sell out. He ain't sell out. No. No. I, like I said, I don't think you can sell out if you never in. In, in my view, it was a job, man. It was an opportunity. And um, the brother, he brought a lot to yeah. that job. You yeah, know what I mean? He brought way more point. to that job than any other coach would be required to bring. Right. I mean, uh, I mean, new locker room, new field. He's paying the, the, the staff with his salary. Like, damn. The what Negro else? was damn near Jesus. What else are y'all right. to do? Right. And then y'all didn't treat him well. I mean, you didn't uh, treat him right. Y'all didn't treat him right. Maybe, maybe, anyway. it's the, maybe it's the fans of Jackson that is the sellouts. Mm. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's, maybe it's the, a city of monkeys that don't stop no show. Right. Maybe that's what we should call it. Wow. Right. <laughs> wow. You know, you, know what, you know what else? A lot of black people don't like when a black man makes white people cringe. Mm. They don't like that. And what Dion doing, they want white folks to feel comfortable. They want white folks to feel comfortable. Mm. Because it, when I seen him, he was telling those kids at CU, get in the port. Right. You like, oh, oh, shoot. Right. That's how you act. Some of them kids are very uncomfortable. In they look very uncomfortable. But all he's doing is, is <coughs> weeding out the ones that don't have heart. We know the weak. If you got hurt, you like, I ain't getting in no portal. I'm playing right. for this team. I'm playing for Coach Prime this year. And you start working hard. And and that coach said it at that little meeting, he was like, these kids don't like to do film stay there, like do nothing. Hmm. He said they don't want the coach, the coach in the back when Coach Prime had the team. And he said, he said, Coach, and he said, what it is is we get these kids film study every Thursday. Nobody wants to do film study. They don't want to do the work. They don't want to do the right. work. Mm. That's why we won in 1 and 11, 1 and 12. Mm. Wow. In, yeah. In the face. I missed that. Wow. Yeah, I thought it was a player. It was a coach. That's part of the game. Yeah, this part of the game. If you don't want to do the work, you got to do the work. It don't matter what you're doing. If, if you're cutting up hot dogs, you got to do the work. If you're doing anything, you have to do the work. You want to be good at it, you got to do the work. Like we show up to work every day. Right. Like every day. And and literally get it in. Like every day. Like I don't I don't, I don't remember what uh, I took a sick day when. I, I don't remember none of y'all taking a sick day. Brian had to be in the hospital to take a sick day. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. You don't never take a sick day. And I was cutting up here with full blown COVID. <laughs> 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 don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. I got my mask on. <laughs> <laughs> That's real. Well, my okay, buddy brought his son in yesterday. His son's sick, sick as a dog over here. Right. He over there trying not to talk. <laughs> <laughs> See, he's sick. <laughs> he's sick. 
Yeah, he said that's why you go to school. You should have left that car. Right. Right. What you doing with motherfucker booking? A whole bunch of grown men sick can't get to work because it's right. You don't bring him in here. Mm -hmm. (laughs) RSV. You know, the other thing that, uh, about this whole situation that brings to mind, man, is, and my sister kind of brought it up, is how, you know, black people, man, always depending on one person, you know what I mean, to, right. to, to change everything. everything. It's not on this one brother to change the state of HBCUs. Always looking for a leader. Always. Always. And then, and then a swear up and down. We ain't got no leaders. But wait, but then when somebody want to lead, you, you don't want to follow. <laughs> right. <laughs> we, got, we got a multitude of issues, man. We got a multitude of issues. We really do. But God bless the, uh, the brother, uh, Dion Sanders. Welcome, 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 welcome to Colorado. To Colorado. We, um, we, changing, we changing the name of uh, Boulder. They changed the time of Boulder. I heard it's prime time now. It's prime time. Yeah. And it's no longer called Boulder because that name is just too white. We call it Rock City. Rock City, baby. It's Rock City, baby. <laughs> Rock City, Colorado. Yeah. Rock City, Colorado. Welcome. We Welcome, prime time. Prime time. <laughs> um, I wanted to shift gears a little bit because, you know, I'm a little late. Fam, I'm a little late, but um, and I still haven't seen the Black Panther movie, The Wakanda Forever. Woman Wakanda Forever. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to shift gears, man, yeah, and I want to talk about because uh, I saw the Woman King, and uh, we all watched it in the shop yesterday as well. Um, it was entertaining, but I want to uh, shift because. There were some there were some very disturbing things about uh, to me about the movie, right? There were some very disturbing things about the movie. So we want to shift a little bit. We want to talk a little bit about uh, is there is there a is there a war? It's a war against, against black, men? black men against masculinity. This year, this what year, is going on? has been the war on us. I'm not kidding. Like all the movies is like just Xing us out. Black men and Xing us out. Woman King, uh, it, it's one it's black girl power. I'm with that. To a certain extent, until you start kicking us out. Right. <laughs> it can be black girl power all day, but you can't kick us out. They just gonna be black girl power in the house. Give us something. Something. Damn. Woman King. The, uh, uh, a lady, she's fighting, she, just all women fighting. Hey, oh. What's up? I was an old client, he skipped that little, ba- that little baby in here mm-hmm. at 10 o'clock. And, 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 then, and then we got Honey L just walked in with his little loud baby. Little boss baby. His son, his son, he's touching, he's bad. Listen to him. Come on, fellas. Say hi to the untouchables. Come on, let's go with the fool. Something. Yeah. I was in the building. Yeah, so, so the, the woman king, uh, I, I probably got this perspective than Saeed. The Saeed, he loved y'all. Like, <laughs> he loved y'all. Tell, tell us about the woman king, uh, Trav. Tell us, okay, tell us so, your thoughts on the woman king. So it's like all these, all these uh, you know, back in what, 1823? Mm-hmm. When they got back to 1823, and it was like, you know, the slaves was, they weren't even slaves. They weren't slaves. They was just, like, mm-hmm. they had a king. Warriors. But all his fighters was women. The ones with the heart was women. Like, the dudes was, they had some dudes, but they was just standing over there like, like, they was kind of scared, like. But then the women was fighting men, and they was, like, killing men, like, slicing men's stuff, and men was killing them. And I was like, damn, well, I mean, where the dudes at? <laughs> so, right. in the end, like, if you haven't seen it, log off, whatever. In the end, the, the, the lady actually kills her daughter's 
baby dad? No, her baby dad. Her baby dad. Her, her baby, baby, dad. Her her baby, baby dad. daughter's father. It was her daughter's father. Right. That raped her. Right. And what else was he? He was Muslim. He was Muslim. He was Muslim. Come on, man. He was a slaver. He was Come all on, of that. Man. And a rapist. And a baby dad. So that's and a baby dad. A deadbeat. He's a he's a deadbeat. Right. <laughs> uh that's Saeed. Crazy. Let's talk about it. The woman came. I'm going to say this. As a movie, I was entertained by the movie. I thought it was a lot of good action. I thought it was a lot of good, you know, um, you know, aesthetically, I thought it was beautiful. I thought everybody looked good in the movie. Um, when I read, um, Walter Rodney's book, when I was in college, um, How You're Underdeveloped Africa, he goes into great detail about the Dahomey Amazon women and on how brutal these women were. Well, in the movie, they portrayed them as having a moral compass and was wanting to back up out of the slave trade to a degree. But in the book, they were actually, you know, the last to stop slave trading. Mm. And they were, you know, um, very hostile uh, group of people. But in the movie, it just showed them as it was just them. They also had men that they fought with as well. It wasn't just them. Right. They were a special unit of women, but it wasn't just them. They had men, but they never showed the men, you know, pretty much in the movie. They showed them a little bit in the movie. But, you know, I, I did take, you know, you know, this, this, when, when people had the argument about, you know, Muslims were the ones who came in and snatched up Africans and sold them to white people, Europeans. This, this shows you that there were other groups of Africans that were doing the exact same thing. So what nobody's hands clean in the transatlantic slave trade. Yeah, Muslims did this, but it wasn't just them. But I, 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 I felt like the men that were portrayed in the movie um, was, was kind of like on some color purple type shit. It wasn't, it wasn't a good black man in the whole movie to me. Look like. Even the king was kind of, right. You know, the king was, was something I, I didn't, I don't know, maybe I'm just stuck on Star Wars when John Boyega is running after the goddamn Millennium Falcon screaming at the little white girl. I, maybe I'm just still stuck on that, the way I can see him in a serious, hardcore, uh, black man king role like that, but but maybe that's just my shit. Too <laughs> soft, man, like L L D B Q T R S T. Do it, yeah. <laughs> And yeah, that would never happen in Africa. Right. Not at that time, and not now. You know, because exactly. you know, I know, I know, I know people in that community who go to go who go to West Africa, and they like, man, look, I'll go to prison if they find out my lifestyle out here. Right. So I don't, I don't think even eighteen twenty three, I doubt very serious if that that brother would be out in the open like that, even right next to the king. You know, so I don't know, you know, I do feel like that there's a, you know, and an, an, an emasculation uh, uh, machine that is going on in Hollywood. You know, and I, I would like to see some of these black directors, you know, put their foot down and, and, you know, even if they gotta go independent uh, and, and create a film that would portray black men in a positive light. Damn, I'm like, Ain't, 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 no, ain't no black man that was of any substance, man. Chadwick Boseman right. was the only one that, uh, Chadwick Boseman, Don Cheadle and Rosewood, right. <laughs> and Samuel L. Jackson in A Time to Kill was like the hardest black man I've ever seen on film. Django. And Django. Yeah. And that's yeah. it. You know, it, it, it's interesting, man, because I'm looking at the movie, and I had heard so many good things about it that 
I don't know if, I, if my expectations were <laughs> high. No, they really weren't because I know Hollywood, you know what I mean? And I know who runs Hollywood. So looking at that movie, The Woman King, it could have easily been uh, Wakanda Forever, just in terms of just the, 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 the way that the movie was done, the, uh, the choreography of the fight scenes. It was like, it was a work of fiction. Like, but the thing, the thing is, is they passed it off as though it was uh, a historically accurate type of movie, right? right. How which, did you need to stop trying to which make it like was, you know what I mean? And, and you know, shout outs to um, Sister Viola Davis and all the sisters who busy. were uh, in the movie. But to me, uh, it, it indicates the greater war on black men, the way it emasculated the men. And uh, really? not emasculated, uh, uh, feminized the men and emasculated the women. Because the women, shoot, they was like dudes. Yeah. You know what I mean? They they on yo, this is thick uh thick ass eyebrows as thick as mine, you know what I'm saying? Uh hard as nails. And then the men, like you said, the king, he, he reminded me of fellow Michael Thomas in Miami Vice, you know what I'm saying? He got a little Jerry curl, he got a little pimp robe and a bunch of women around him, you know? <laughs> and, and 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 then the little effeminate dude that he had by his side, which was just weird. And it was like, he was almost like a transgender. Like, why would you throw a transgender in a historical movie? You know what I mean? So there were so many uh, problems. And, and then, of course, the, the homies, in terms of, um, you know, they did have an army. The, uh, the uh, Gose, who was the, the, uh, the woman king's guard, that was the king's guard. You know what I mean? So you wouldn't send your women, like our brother was in here yesterday from Nigeria, and he was saying, man, you would never send your women out to fight. Because if your woman gets killed, that's the end of your nation. Right. Who's going to have the babies? Who's going to have the babies? Right. Who's going to populate? He said that, so it was just, it was just weird, and it just showed the, that there is absolutely an agenda against black men, against uh, black masculinity, and really against um, black femininity as well, if you really look at it. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? You know, even, even right now, when we look at the climate of black male-female relationships, it's, it's, it's a competitive thing going on between us. And I've had sisters in this barbershop say that black men hate black women. I heard black men say, man, look, I can't stand these sisters. Right. And then you push a movie like this out the way you see this big old brother man, closed fist, whooping the hell out of Viola Day. Right. I know that triggered some sisters. Right. I know that triggered some, some black women. You know, protect. in the worst way. Because who was gonna protect our black women? Why would exactly. you even why would you even man, Hollywood is very Scientific, strategic. strategic, and the things that right. they push out into the world. Right, right. At this day and time, man, when you see the black family in a shambles right now, when you see the black family very dismantled, mm -hmm. throw a movie like this out. Right. It is an agenda to destroy the black family. It is an agenda to um, to um, socially castrate the black man. Mm. Just like how they did in ancient times where they would kill the black men off, kill the black babies off, now they are socially, socially doing this to our brothers. Mm. That's big. That's big. And uh, hey, y'all, Belinda's in the room. <laughs> Belinda's in the room. Bernie and Linda? <laughs> Belinda. And Yolanda <laughs> said she said the same thing. There's no need to have a character like that transgender in this film. What was the purpose? And it was, it was it was that it was throw the dog a bone. You know what I mean? Yeah. Every movie now has to have a homosexual. It has to have a transgender. Sis it has Empire. to have some sort of uh, uh, gay love scene in it. It's there's there's clearly an agenda that's being pushed. Not only movies, commercials. Right. Yeah. Big time. I mean, we the we the face of HIV uh, medication. When you look at the commercials, it's nothing but black folks in these commercials. When did that? When did that happen? It just like popped back out. Like you didn't hear about HIV for years. Right. Now it's just like that. Right. 
Like, that's crazy. We not in picture vaccines, Trav. So, you know, that was the first uh, virus. Of course, they never found a vaccine for that one, even though they said they were. But, you know, so. <laughs> now they just put the... No, nah, I'm not even gonna say that. We want to hear it from you too. I say too much. They not put this on YouTube. I promise you. I promise you, man. Uh, Keith and Gore is in the building. Peace to the God. Keith and Gore. What do you think about that movie, though? Uh, I mean, honestly, I, I I didn't know too much about it, so I just went into it with the intent of just watching it. So I don't even pay attention. Well, it did remind me of kind of forever, you know, as far as the women being the, the warriors of the society and the men just sitting in the back letting the women fight the war. You know, I, I can agree with that, but, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> there were right. no men in Wakanda. Yeah. Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. No, it was like four dudes. Even like four dudes in Wakanda. The men look soft. There were like four know? dudes in Wakanda. Yeah, so let's, let's move on to Wakanda then. Let's move on to Wakanda because we know what was in the Woman King. I haven't seen Wakanda forever um, <laughs> for obvious reasons. <laughs> but I've heard, some again, some positive things. I've heard some negative things. Uh, I didn't see it, to be quite honest, because I didn't feel like... Um, I didn't feel like killing off you know, T'Challa was, was the thing. It's like, man, if the, you know, man, all due respect to brother uh, Chadwick Boseman, he passed away. But he is not the star of Black Panther. The star of Black Panther, just like every other superhero movie, is the suit. Put another brother in the suit. Period. You know what I'm saying? You don't ever, you don't, you don't ever have to die. So, so y'all saw the movie, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I know Trav saw it. <laughs> yeah. I know Saeed saw it. Woman kind of. Say it again. Woman kind of forever. <laughs> Woman kind of forever. I am, I am, I'm not like this all the way show this. We're all the way show. <laughs> but I, I, I do feel like the man is the head. Right. Like, and they try to take that. Like, I don't, I don't like that. Like, I, this is me. Like, I grew up watching my, my dad, my grandfather. I, I've seen like strong male figures in my life. Like, and the whole Wakanda for in the first one. The mm -hmm. first one you had Chadwick. Right. You had the daddy. Yes. You had uh, what's what what what's Michael B. Jordan? Yes, yeah, Mbaku. You, you had Mbaku. Mbaku. You had every all these big strong men right. in this movie, and the second one gone. All of like them. all of them was gone. They even had a scene where the dude in the mountain he was scared. Right. Come on now. Right. Him and his crew, they like y'all with it? He big like Mbaku, no. Scared. No. The hardest, the hardest dude in Wakanda forever was the uh, the, the fool with the, with the with the wings on his feet. Submariner. Uh, hey, mm -hmm. hey, he was hard. Uh, come on now. Keep on going. Said that uh, uh, Black Panther was the same movie as the Woman King. It was yeah. the same movie. Same. <laughs> same movie. A whole woman army. Come on, yeah, just a spin off of the Wakanda army. Mm. That's what that was. Wow. Right, which of course, yeah, the the uh, Goze is is uh, that's where the the concept for the Dora Milaje came from. as Black Panther was from the sisters and the homie. Mm -hmm. uh, Say, what was your uh, what was your thing on? Well, I mean, I'm a comic book fan, and just like you, <laughs> when it comes to you know all due respect. Peace be upon him, uh, the brother Chadwick Boseman. You know, he is not T'Challa. Right. right. They could have recasted that role and kept the ball pushing. How many Supermans have we had? Right. How many Batmans have right. we had? Right. You had a movie with three goddamn Spider-Mans in it. Wow. 
than one well, thing. Well, you know, so I think Chadwick Boseman would have green-lighted someone playing his character. You know, this is what we're gonna hear anyway about a uh, 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 movie star green-lighting anything. You, you know, know what I'm saying? Right. You, when, you, when, you read, when you read the comic book, yes, sure he becomes Black Panther. But they could have waited. But he, but he wasn't. But in in the in the in the comic strip, T'Challa wasn't dead. Right. He was absent, and she she had to become Black Panther because someone had to lead the nation. You know. The same thing with uh, um, Killmonger. Mm -hmm. He's always been a nemesis to Black Panther. Right. Even there's like many comics with T'Challa as Black Panther squaring up against Submariner. They could have even, and I and I understand why they waited so long to do a, a sequel to Black Panther. Right. From the first Black Panther to this one that's out right now, you had three Spider-Man movies that came out. Right. They could have quite possibly did a Black Panther with Chadwick Boseman playing T'Challa. Mm. If they would have if they would have been on the body, if they'd have been, you know, just like everybody else with it. I you know, I didn't uh I didn't like them killing off um Angela Bassett's uh character. I thought that was unnecessary. Mm. I thought that was Right. Goofy as hell. Um, <laughs> um, even with with with, with uh, Travis said, from the first movie to this one, they killed black men <coughs> off. They killed the father, the uncle, Killmonger. Uh, uh, what's the brother? Uh, uh, Forrest Whitaker. Forrest Whitaker. Right. T'Challa. Right. <laughs> He, right. he, he wasn't. He wasn't killed off. He's in the prison. He, right. he in jail. So I mean, <laughs> what, what's, what's really going on? Uh, right. Disney, right? Marvel. You know what's going on. This is again. This is that's all it. That's, that's, that's the question. question. That is the question. Is 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 Hollywood against the black man? Is Hollywood, Hollywood against is a black against black, black masculinity? You know what I mean? He is against black. Don't nobody like black men, not even our women half the time. Black men, <laughs> black men is the is the most hated and the most celebrated simultaneously. Mm. You wow. know what I'm saying? Because when you look at like when you look like a strong black man, first thing they try to do is put this thing in a dress. Mm -hmm. Why are you doing that? You know, Dr. Wesley Muhammad said in his book, man, that they would often do that to our slaves. Right. Black men throw him in a dress to emasculate him because white men wanted to show the world that he was the man. Hmm. Not the black man, not the original man. That's deep. Hmm. So what you gonna do, how you gonna do when you get into in, into the Hollywood scene and everything like that, man? You go, you go put a black man in a dress, you go have, you know, uh, Pumped the fire, getting his ass whooped. Right. It's like, like that, that movie. Look, even though, even though uh, was the white boy that did the movie Django, um, uh, uh, Quentin Tarantino. Tarantino. Quentin Tarantino. I could take a leave his movies. I like his movies for the most part. Mm -hmm. But Django man was a whoop ass black man right. in that movie. Right. right. You gotta respect it. Got gotcha. you. And and uh, and I and I gotta and I gotta stand firm with my brother uh, Nate Parker, man, for even putting out the Nat, Nat Turner, Turner movie. Yes, sir. Although historically Nat Turner dies in the end, it showed a man with some moxie, man, right. something that they don't ever show in Hollywood. Right. Right. Yeah. That's it. That's it. And the uh, what was the white client? Who? He, he, he was like, did you hear what he said? What he said? You gonna crop those Yeezys out? Make sure the easy name in the picture. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. at, look, a war on black men and, and black masculinity. Exactly. And you know, I saw, um, dang, he said that. I, yeah, I, 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 I didn't hear him. I, I, was was man, I had these hear buzz on. I said, no. I said, I can't wait for him to be $10. Right. Oh. Probably, <laughs> That's yeah. what I'm going to go get all of so there's a war on black men in Hollywood, and if they can't get the uh, the fictional black man, they're gonna get the real black man, and that's what the whole Yay Kyrie piece was about, right? Right. Right. Mm -hmm. 
put us in our place or try to put us in our place. Mm -hmm. It don't, it don't stop. stop, man. It, it don't, don't stop. stop. It's, it's going, going on, on and 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 on. Um, wow. What kind of? What kind They had four dudes in there. They had four men in Wakanda forever. <laughs> four men. They was all old, except for the young dude. The big, who, who. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the at the posters side by side, man, of the Woman King and Wakanda Forever, and you really can't tell the difference between. It, it looked like the same movie, right? It looked like like the exact same movie. They had an old man with the bumps on his face. Mm. They had the dude with the with the plate in his mouth. He owed to. But you know, but you know, brother, Har, I gotta I gotta say this though that. Those two movies are very empowering for women. Black women. Yeah, it was, it was. My daughter, and I took my niece. Both of my daughters love both of these movies. Right. My daughter last night was like, Daddy, I want to see Woman King again. I'm not going to say no right. to her. Right. You know, because I want, you know, I think she just, to, she needs to be visually stimulated and empowered just like our boys need to. But just like when our boys, had Black Panther, they stripped it away from us, mm -hmm. you know? So, I don't know, you know. <laughs> right. Well, what B's client yesterday, he said he never let his wife watch the uh, woman king. <laughs> well, that's gonna be a problem, because he said let. <laughs> he said let, let. <laughs> let, let. let. All the right here, like, let. What do you mean, let me do that? And he let me do that. Travis will take you Ooh, was that what he <laughs> said? I didn't hear him say that. Yeah. <laughs> so I would never let my woman watch that. Moment. Well, he was from Nigeria. He was from right. Nigeria. <laughs> so he was, he was dead ass. He was like, when the dude slapped the lady, he said, that's what it's about. You know what I'm saying? You ain't about that in America, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was shooting all through the movie. He like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, he must not. He must not be married when he's American, black, right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, it, it's it's um, it's a huge problem though. It's a huge problem, it's it's a huge problem, problem because, because so many of our people, our minds are shaped by what it is that we see coming out of Hollywood. And that's why Hollywood is such a uh, is such an important place because they're the ones who ship ship out all the imagery that we see. They're the ones who cause us to see, uh, uh, think something is cool and something is not cool. You know what I mean? If it's coming across your screen every single day, you can't help but to be programmed, which is why it's called programming, right? And so uh, when they put out these these images, and then they got all these weak black men right or effeminate black men or they just don't show no black men at all right. um what does that do to because we're talking about the, the 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 consciousness of our young girls seeing the woman king or wakanda forever but what about our young boys right. you know what i'm saying the ones that really need the help right now because little white boys get stimulated every time they turn on every tv time they, turn on. they get they get you know their potential every time they go to the movies you know, even like, we was talking about, you know, being independent. Maybe it's the same type of mentality. We was talking about Jackson State. We waiting on them to right. create our own movies. Exactly. We have, like Hollywood sitting right here in Atlanta, Georgia with the Tyler Perry Studios. Exactly. We have enough, you know, well-informed, well-documented young men and women, filmmakers that could get out there and do that. Just like back in the 70s when we had the black exploitation uh, push for every John Shaft, you had a, uh, 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 Pam Greer for mm -hmm. every uh, um, Jim Kelly, you had a Cleopatra Jones. Right. You know, it was more of a balance back then. Right, right. But those are independent films being pushed out. Yeah, that's, that's, that's true. true. The problem with the problem with Black Hollywood though is um, the, the mental, the mentality of Black Hollywood usually mirrors that of White Hollywood. You know what I mean? So you know. Yeah. Say what you want about Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry is some, um, you know, he's, he's a brilliant brother, brother, man. He, he, he has, uh, his business acumen is second to none. However, some of the movies, you know, 
It's some of them movies, man. It's whack. Right. You know what I mean? And, and they have they even have an agenda, it seems, against right. black men. Oh yeah. Even though Tyler Perry is a uh, is a black man himself, he uh he leans more heavily towards um, empathizing with black women than he does black men. For whatever reason, what for whatever reason, you know what I'm saying, that he grew up with. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's that's a whole lot of stuff that we have to uh, even unpack when it comes to black filmmakers and the stuff that we're putting out. We put out some really harmful crap as well. Yes. You know what I mean? Um, and I think part of it is that it's being green lighted by others. Mm-hmm. But the other part of it is, is where is our mental? You know what I'm saying? Right. Because a lot, of, a lot of the stuff that they put out, man, I don't want my children to see. For real. Because this is disturbing to me. So I, I could just imagine the sort of impact it would have on the babies. So true. So who's it? Ooh, what if Keep and Lewis say? Keep and Lewis say, what about the blatant black versus Hispanic relationship and how they befriend us just to use us? Interesting. Big uh, uh, Tweet is watching. Uh, Trav, Big Bruce is watching. Um, Lunch money. <laughs> Tweet. <laughs> Big <laughs> said, what's happening, Lunch money? <laughs> <laughs> but we, 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 we wrapping it up, y'all. We wrapping it up. Um, any last thoughts on this? Uh, you know, black men and the black women meet each other. That's all I can say. I know that. That's, that's a fact. Yeah. We need y'all. And y'all need us. Right. How about that? And, that, and that's we the good thing about, um, about that movie, that whole concept of uh, the woman king, the whole concept of Mawu and Lisa, the, the divine masculine and the divine feminine. That was one very powerful point of the movie, but they didn't spend much time on that. <laughs> At all. At all, but listen, we gonna we gonna um get out of here. Uh, y'all got some last words? Go Jackson State. <laughs> 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 Welcome Prime Time to Rock City. Rock City, Rock City, Prime Time. <laughs> Man, um, it's been a blast. Listen, I'm going to uh, what y'all, y'all got anything to sell? Y'all got anything to sell before we get out of here? Get your Spring Style. Put it on the line. Hey, Stuff2.com. Hey, Stuff2.com. Stuff2. But, but just, just make, make sure. sure um, we're going to go right. With Trav, you got to. Stop calling him. With Trav, you got to. With Trav, you got to hit him on his beat, bro. Come to the shop. He can put you down in his book. Look, you got to. Make sure you book online. Hey, Stuff2.com. But it's Trav again. Hit him on the hip. Or uh, send the carrier pigeon with a message. My <laughs> 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 Oh man, but we got we're gonna get out of here. I want to invite you all um, to the Nation of Islam Study Group. I know in the barbershop you're not supposed to talk about sports. You're not supposed to talk about politics. You're not supposed to talk about religion. But in this barbershop we talk about sports. We talk about <laughs> politics, <laughs> and we talk about religion. So come on out this Sunday, uh, 10 a.m., 4651 Tulsa Court. Love to have you. Come here to teach us the honor of Elijah Muhammad by uh, 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 being taught by your little brother, Brother Herman. Um, what else we got? We got some stuff to sell. Come to Supreme Style Barbers. Um, get all you need. Make sure that you get your latest edition of the Final Call newspaper. Go to finalcalldigital.com and subscribe to the final call. It's the biggest, baddest, blackest, boldest newspaper on the planet. It's the most widely read and circulated black publication in the world, not just in this country, in the world, Craig. So go to finalcalldigital.com and make sure that you get that. And get your life insurance. Again, get you some life insurance. Get you some life insurance. Look, go back to um, Supreme Style. Go to xr2.com and click on the ethos page um that's life insurance no medical exams just sign up because you need uh life insurance make sure that you are responsible we get tired of seeing y'all when you when your loved ones die from taking the vaccine y'all doing go fund me on facebook 
<laughs> just, just being real. Just being real. A GoFundMe is not life insurance, right? So, we out of here, y'all. Y'all don't have nothing else? Nothing else? That's it. That's it. All right. Peace. Love. Peace. Hair grease. Um, Suffering. In my day, Barber was a counselor, he was a fashion expert, uh, he was a style coach, pimp, just general all around hustler. Have you ever seen a collard green when it grow up? No show. Sure.